unidentified. My top UFO cases by Hector V. Bello, March 2018th. Stefan Miklock was an industrial mechanic by trade and an amateur geologist who liked to venture into the wilderness around Falcon Lake, about 150 kilometers east of Winnipeg, to prospect for quartz and silver. He has staked some claims the prior year and set out on the May long weekend in 1967 to explore some more. On May 20th, 1967, Stefan was near a vein of quartz along the Precambrian Shield in the area when the 51-year-old was startled by a gaggle of nearby geese that erupted into a clattering of honks. According to his accounts, as reported in the newspapers, at the time and since repeated in books, magazines and on TV shows like the Unsolved Mysteries, Stefan looked up and saw two cigar-shaped objects with, re with a reddish glow hovering about 50, uh, 47, 45 meters away. One descended, one descended, according to Stefan's account, landing on a flat section of rock and taking on more of a disc shape. The other remained in the air and for a few minutes before flying off. Believing it to be a secret U.S. military experimental aircraft, Stefan sat back and sketched it over the next half an hour. Then he decided to approach, later recalling the warm air and smell of sulfur as he got closer, as well as a whirring sound of motors and hissing of air. He also noted a door open on the side with bright lights inside and said he heard voices muffled by the sounds from the craft. He said he called out offering mechanical help to the Yankee boys if they needed it. The voices went quiet but did not answer. So Stefan tried in his native Polish then in Russian then finally in German. Only the whir and hiss of the craft responded. He claims he went closer and noted the smooth metal of the ship with no seams. He then looked into the bright doorway, pulling on the welding goggles he used to protect his eyes while chipping at rocks during prospecting. Inside, Stefan said he saw light beams and panels of various colored flashing lights, but could not see anyone or any living thing. When he stepped away, three panels slid across the door opening and sealed it. He reached to touch the craft when he said it melted the fingertips of the gloves he was wearing. The craft then began to turn counterclockwise and Stefan says he noticed a panel that contains a grid of holes. Shortly afterwards, he was struck in the chest by a blast of air or gas that pushed him backward and set his shirt and cap ablaze. He ripped away the burning garments as the craft lifted off and flew away. Disoriented and nauseous, Stefan stumbled through the forest and vomited. He eventually made his way back to his motel room in Falcon Lake, then caught a bus back to Winnipeg. He was treated at a hospital for burns to his chest and stomach that later turned into raised sores on a grid-like pattern, and for weeks afterwards he suffered from diarrhea, headaches, blackout, and weight loss. On the screen we can see on the left top left the original sketch from the 
uh, witness in this case it was Mr. Stefan Michalak which apparently or reportedly he spent over half an hour about half an hour uh, plenty of time to make a very detailed sketch around the middle bottom of the screen is the photo of the burnt clothes clothing garment looks like an undershirt with what looks like some type of pattern burns on the top right is a piece of the re radioactive metal that was retrieved from the crash site it was found in the cracks of the Precambian rock, pre rock. On the middle is a photo of Mr. T Stefan Michalak, apparently either in bed or laying down in the either in, in his home or in the hospital. And on the bottom, there are some further sketches of how the ship, how the ship may have looked like, according to the descriptions of Mr. Michaelak. 